seven days, hard 75 bull testicles, biohacking, okay. <laughs> Ambition, ready? Okay. Hard work, hustle, blood, sweat, and tears, your grind. To listen to the fitness gurus, you'd think that pain is the sacrifice that you must lay upon the altar of gains so that you get any progress in life. But after 20 years in the fitness industry, I'm here to say, I don't think that's true. In fact, I think that pain or the, and the, uh, the positive associations, the love affair that we have with suffering is actually what keeps us from getting to our goals in the long run, not the thing that helps us over that hurdle that gets us to the next level. Let's get into it. Hey, my name's Coach Josh, and I'm a proud veteran who's had the honor to work with United States Army soldiers, professional roller derby athletes, and everyone in between. And today, I help people think holistically to overcome age, injuries, and the disease of conventional thinking to live their best life. Let's go. On the surface, hard work seems like good advice until you start to measure it for just one second and then you realize that what that equates to is more weight, more reps, train harder, train to failure, hell, train past failure, train to force reps, go beyond your physical capacity, not just to perform, but even to recover at all. And what you find is that the work harder advice has you training your ego more than training your heart or your muscles. The consequences for this stack up almost immediately. Number one, hard workout after hard workout leaves people burn out and they end up quitting before they even get into the next phase of their training. So you're less likely to succeed, more likely to quit when you have that go hard or go home mentality. Most people just go home. The second issue is that their performance actually decreases over time. So if you just keep banging harder and harder training, the body starts to degrade. You outstrip your ability to recover, your energy, your focus depletes when you're outside of the gym, outside of the performance arena, and that's not why we embrace fitness in the first place. Third consequence, and probably the most important, is that when fatigue sets in, when your body is really, really tired, that's when form degrades and you're most likely to get injured, whether you're on the sports field or in the weight room. So triple stacking negative consequences for ego training. Ugh, we don't want to do that. In military terms, we say, if you're fighting a war of attrition, you admitted that you have no strategy. In fitness terms, if you're just trying to work harder than the next guy, that means that you might win in the short game. You can destroy yourself in one workout, but you certainly can't build yourself in one workout. And when it comes to fitness, the long game is the only game in town. You see, the wise warrior does have a version of hard work, and that version is called consistency. You might be able to outwork me once. You may be able to do more in one workout than I do in two. However, seven days from now, I will have eaten, slept, rocked, stretched, lifted, recovered, saunaed every single day. And in seven weeks, I'm going to be stronger, faster, and more robust, while you will be program hopping to the next version of Hard 75, eating bull testicles, or doing whatever biohacking strategy you think is gonna get you the results that you already would have gotten had you just stuck with the same program a year ago. 998, 999. The wise warrior sets the weight down with one good rep left in the tank. Knowing full well, it only takes one bad rep to pull a muscle that costs you a thousand reps of lost time. The wise warrior lets the system do the work so that she can just show up every day with what she's got. With forward progress being inevitable, that's how you succeed day in, day out.